In this video, we're going to be checking out the Elegoo Neptune 4. So Elegoo keeps impressing us with their new machines, and I'm pretty excited to see what the latest iteration of the Neptune series has to offer. So in this video, we're going to unbox it, set it up, and do some prints. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. All right, so yeah, pretty exciting here for the Neptune 4, and it's a decent sized box, about what you expect for a medium sized 3D printer. So let's go ahead and open it up. I like how Elegoo uses branded tape so you know if this thing's ever been opened. So everything's encased in black soft foam, and this is what we see on top here. We've got quite a few parts here in the middle. Screen holder, spool holder, AC power cord, US type, about four feet long. Here's something really interesting, cooling fans. And this looks like an external kind of parts cooling accessory here that has on and off switch, a little plug, and four fans that look pretty large. And this is the output here, so yeah, that's quite interesting. And here we have a bag of accessories and all kinds of stuff, and we'll go through this in a second. So let's go ahead and pull the printer out. So there's a few layers. You can either pull them out like this and take out the components. So I'm just gonna do it straight from here. So we got the gantry. Very well packed, pretty familiar looking, dual Z axis. So we'll go through all the details here in a bit. And underneath here, we can see the base. Go ahead and pull that out. If you've seen the other Elegoo machines, they look quite similar, but I do see some differences here and there. So yeah. And over here in the corner, we do have our screen, which is portable. You can grab it and it has a coiling kind of cord that stretches. And that is everything for the box. So let's get this out of the way and we'll bring the base back in, but let's go ahead and flip it around and see what we got underneath. So yeah, um, this new Neptunes are running on new software, which is called Clipper. It is 64 bit. So we do have the power supply here towards the back and towards the front is where our electronics are. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little cover off. And also if you guys notice here, we have four rubber feet on each corner. But before we do that, let's go ahead and see what's inside this bag. So we get an ethernet cable that connects from the printer to your router. We get a little sample of PLA filament in white. Not great, but you do have something to start with. A little spatula here, and this could be useful to get underneath the nozzle. We've got some cutters, and these are very useful as you can cut your filament on an angle and whatnot else. Here we have a USB cable in blue here, and it connects between the printer and the computer. Here's our filament detector that we'll need to install on the printer. Some zip ties for organizing cables. A clean out needle if your nozzle gets clogged you can use this to clean it out. So here we have something that says giveaway. Not sure if this is a bonus item or what, but it is a USB adapter for the micro SD card. It is quite small, so I'm not sure exactly what's on there, but maybe something interesting is on there and we'll check it out once we get to the computer. So we also get a thumb drive with a couple nozzles and a PTFE tubing, looks like an insert for the hot end. So this is our main drive here where we'll find everything for the printer. And we also get a baggie of hardware, which is mostly bolts there that is used for installation and assembly. And for the last part here, we get some tools, open-ended wrenches, a couple screwdrivers and Allen wrenches. So this is Phillips here, which is included. Let's go ahead and take this panel off. All right, that was pretty easy. We do have a fan connected, pretty large one. We'll go ahead and unplug it. And let's take a closer look at the board. So we can see this is not a normal board as it is a clipper type board that I've seen on other printers. That is the model right there. So it's a ZNPK1 version 1.0. We have a MKS EMC that so that must be the hard drive, solid state. We got the four stepper controllers. They are heat synced, non-removable. Here we have a cable that goes 
this side here this is the network looks like our ports are there for the front all our power wires here that come from the power supply and you guys can see everything is hot glued and very well put together here so yeah quite exciting to see printers going to clipper so I'm gonna put the lid back on and we'll flip it around and start the assembly all right so putting the printer together is pretty simple you guys maybe noticed that we did not have any kind of manual or in paper form that was included so you're gonna find it in this red drive thumb drive that's what these nozzles in this bag and there's a PDF in there that I downloaded to my phone and we can kind of go along here so yeah there's some cautions there table of contents this is probably pretty interesting which is the parameters of the printer a little darker here but yeah also shows you all the parts of the printer everything included and step one and putting it together so for the first step we're gonna put the gantry here onto the base let's go ahead and pull out these foam pieces from underneath We'll grab our bag of bolts and we're gonna find M545s, which there's four pieces and they're black. And they're gonna go through the bottom. There's some holes here. And so we're gonna put the gantry with the front of it facing to the front. It's gonna line up. I guess we need to grab our wrench first. That's gonna be the largest one. And I'm gonna use a spool of filament to prop it up or get our bolt ready through the bottom. You guys see it right here. So yeah, just line it up and start them. And there are two of them. And we're just gonna run these down without tightening them yet. All right, now let's flip around. And we'll do this side, same way here. There's this cable here that goes, so you kinda have to push it to the side, but pretty straightforward. And everything lines up really good. And I'm gonna go ahead and run these down, but don't tighten them quite yet. And the reason for that is because we wanna bring our X axis down, so the separation between the two rails is as even as possible. So I'm gonna grab the belt here and just turn it and that's gonna bring it down by turning the lead screws. So you can turn the coupler also. So I'm just gonna go all the way down. And so we know that it's pretty happy here. And now we can go ahead and tighten these bolts underneath. Make sure you snug them up pretty well, but don't go crazy on them, as this is the only thing holding the gantry up. So once you start feeling good resistance, that's pretty good. And we'll do the same thing here. So that should be good. Now if your base is not completely flat, like it moves around, which mine is not, but if it does, just try pushing on the edges to level it out. There are bolts here that you can check if they're tight enough. So mine are actually a little bit more looser than they probably should be. So once you flatten it out, you can tighten these bolts up. All right. So for step two, we're gonna be installing the screen holder, which will require three M420 bolts. And that's this guy here. The bolts are gonna go through here. You guys can see the three holes. And it's literally gonna line up right over here. And it goes just like that. So here's the baggie of the bolts. There's actually five in there. Two are for something else. We're gonna grab three of them, grab the correct wrench, and start here from the back in now there is a magnet right here and it does try to magnetize while you're trying to screw them in so but yeah simply we're just going to line up the holes with the threads and tighten it on not a hard thing to do just could get a little frustrating with trying to get underneath there as the wrench is barely long enough to clear the end here so but yeah not a big deal all right and that is the screen here, or the screen holder, should I say. All right, so for step three, we're gonna install the screen onto the holder and plug it in. And then after that, step four is quite a few things. There's a filament detector that goes on the top and also our main cable that has a bracket that we need to install and connect it to the hot end. So this is the screen here and it's already plugged in on one side and it's just gonna literally magnetize right here. And then the other end is gonna plug in on the front here to the control panel. So yeah, simple as that. I guess I forgot to mention that the spool holder itself is also with the same step on four there with everything. So yeah. So before we go up, let's go ahead and install this bracket, which holds this cable here that goes from the side. So it's this one on this side that goes up and there's a split of some wires. And right after that, this is where we're going to install this bracket next to the lead screw here. And so the clip is just gonna go around the flat wire. And what I like to do is kind of push on the wire. You guys maybe can see if you push on it, it kind of becomes like a circle. And that's where that you want your bracket to kind of go. So, so you can kind of fold it or if you kind of bounce it around just right, it becomes like a perfect circle and fits right in there. And it can actually slide back and forth pretty easily too, so. 
Once you get that around, you're gonna connect it here on the top and we'll snug it down with this bolt. All right, so that looks good right there. So if we flip back around to the front, our other end here is gonna connect to our hot end assembly. Here we also have a relief bracket that the cable goes into. So hopefully you guys can see, but there's these two locking tabs that we gotta open. And then we're gonna take the cable and just plug it in. And it goes only one way, you can kind of see. The little nub goes to the back. And we're just literally gonna push and it's all gonna lock together. Just like that, so. And now we can feed our cable into the relief bracket. So we're gonna go in one and then kind of help the other side go in and flatten it out. And simple as that, it is on. And so what you wanna do now is you wanna check, make sure you got enough, which as you guys can see we do. We can actually go back just a little if we want to, but this is about right. And so we have plenty of length here for the travel. So let's go here to the top and I don't know how well you guys can see, but we got a couple threads here, brass, and this is where we're gonna connect our spool holder, which by the way is this piece here, and a couple M420 bolts, the same ones we used for the screen. We'll go through the spool holder into the top here. So yeah, guys, it's pretty logical here, and it all lines up quite well, and quite easy to figure out. So we do need to install our filament detector. This comprises of two pieces. We've got the detector and a bolt, and it's a special bolt that swivels, and the bolt's gonna go through the bracket here on the inside like that, and we're gonna connect it on this side. So you can connect them both, but we can see our wire here that goes to the detector is coming from this side. So if we swivel over, you can see that we got a little brass thread there. And so you should be able to tighten it completely and this will still swivel around. And now we can plug the detector in. Here on the side, we can see where the plug goes. And there's plenty of wire for it to move around. And for the last piece, we got the holder itself where the spool goes, and that literally screws in from either side, but we're gonna screw it from this side because our detector's on this side. I'm just simply gonna tighten it clockwise until it gets tight, and yeah, our spool will go on here, and then it'll feed through the detector and then down into the extruder. So for step five, we're gonna install our super cool large cooling fans there, and that's gonna have the M445 bolts, three of them. And then after that, which is part six here, we're gonna plug everything in on the printer, and then we're gonna check our rollers, adjust what we need, and then it goes into the software and things like that. So let's flip this to the back, and we're gonna grab our fan here. So if we look at these vents, they go towards the bottom, and the switch here with on and off, and the plug goes to the top like this. Yeah, it should line up here, something like that. Let's grab our bolts. And yeah, this is quite a unique idea here that I don't think I've ever seen, at least on a budget printer, implemented in, in this kind of way. So yeah, pretty cool, and that's where it lives here. So we do have a plug that plugs in right here, and I think we should have probably, if you guys can see here, routed this thing through this bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off again and add it to the pack. Tighten this bolt back up, and now we can plug it in right here. So yeah, that's really nice. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So if we look at these wires here, so we've got a larger one and a smaller one, and they're labeled with the letter X. The larger one's gonna be for the motor and the smaller one for the end stop switch. So the motor's right here. Let's go ahead and plug that in under there. And the end stop switch is this plug here. All right, so we've got the X plugged in. If we go down to this corner, we can see we got a few wires. They are all different, which is the good part. But the one we're looking for is a Z, and that's gonna plug in into the Z motor here on the bottom. And the other two just plug in as we got a two pin and a three pin plug. Simple as that. As long as nothing's in the way, everything looks good. The bed clears everything. We're done here. And one more thing is the other Z motor, which plugs right here. That is all the plugs. Everything else is plugged in, which we already plugged in the filament detector up here and fans here. So yeah, for the next part, let's check all our rollers and our belt. And we'll start here at the bottom of the printer. And if you guys can see maybe underneath, there are a couple rollers, one, two, and there's one, two on the other side. So there's four total and they clamp around this channel here. So these two are stationary and the other side where the screen is, they're adjustable. And what you wanna do is you wanna stick your hands under there on both sides and kind of roll them and see how they roll. And you can also see if your bed is wobbling or not. So mine is loose and it's kind of wobbling. So it does need to be adjusted. So the front is way too loose and the back is also loose. So let's go to the other side where you can probably see a little better. Take the screen off. And under there we have two adjustable eccentric nuts. And you're gonna use the larger wrench, like an open-ended one. 
to turn the eccentric nuts to get closer and farther away. So I'm gonna spin it one way and see how that does. So we got a little closer, spin the other one up front, and I got my hand in the other side, seeing how much resistance there is on the other roller. So you wanna have just like a small resistance where you can still spin the roller. And you probably wanna go ahead and take off the build plate so you don't get it too dirty or greasy from just touching the bed. But yeah, essentially we're just adjusting those eccentric nuts in there so they are grabbing around the channel just good enough where they are slightly compressing but still loose enough where they're not too tight and your bed doesn't wobble. And you should be able to spin the roller in one spot and that should be pretty much perfect and it feels really good and there's no wobble. Also, we wanna go ahead and check our belt here to see if it's tight enough. And this knob here up front will tighten it and loosen it. So clockwise to tighten it up and counterclockwise to loosen it. So depending on, you know, how loose or tight yours is, you know, you don't wanna make them too tight, but if you start hearing some notes, that's too tight. So you wanna have a really low note. Don't make them too tight as they're quite small. And you don't want to put too much pressure on all the rollers and bearings. So. Now going up here, we're going to have the same thing with the hot end. But because we put this fan on, you guys can't see. But we essentially have two rollers on the top that are stationary. And then one roller on the bottom, which is adjustable. And the wrench goes underneath here and you can adjust it. So on mine, it's actually adjusted perfectly as I can spin these wheels quite easy. And there's lots of friction and there's no wobble. So it's literally perfect on mine. So I'm not gonna adjust it, but again, to adjust it, you go from underneath, and it's the same concept, just tight enough around the channel where it's not wobbling, but loose enough where you can spin these. So yeah, that looks good and feels good. And same thing up front here with the adjusting the belt is we're gonna tighten and loosen this knob here to get it just right. So, so mine was actually pretty good already. Get it a little bit tighter and feels good. So yeah, love that they have these knobs for the X and Y. So we do have a few more rollers to look at and that's these here on the z-axis and normally there's no reason to adjust these unless they're way off because we do have dual lead screws but if yours are way off like too tight then you probably want to adjust them if they're too loose maybe adjust them also like mine are slightly loose but there is drag so i'm not gonna touch them and same thing for this side so they were pre-adjusted from the factory very well but if you do have to adjust them the adjusting eccentric nuts are on the inside here that's pretty much everything for adjustments on the Y, X, and Z. And as you guys can see, it's pretty straightforward to get out of the box, build it, adjust it, and we're pretty much ready to go. All right, so this is the Neptune 4. It's quite familiar look. It definitely looks very similar to the earlier version, which is the 3, but we do have a few unique things about it. So starting up here, we got the spool holder, and this is where our spool goes. The filament detector plugs in here. This upper portion here is injected molded plastic, it's screwed to the aluminum frame going down. We got Nice little picture drawings here with create the future wording, Elegoo logo, metal brackets for the Z lead screws with bearings, very nice. We have a tether belt here going between the two. Underneath the logo, we do have a light bar, very cool. Going down from there, we can see our hot end extruder. Our X axis is a smaller channel. We do have adjusters for the belt here. Large fan there behind with the cooling coming out here. Our X axis end stop switch here. The motor behind it that runs the belt. So the hot end assembly is a direct drive, which works very well. This is where we plugged in the main cable and everything's inside. You can see a gear here that turns the extruder. This is where we're gonna feed in the filament. I love to see that stainless steel bushing there. This is the lever to release the filament. We got dual cooling fans on each side. And also not to mention this four fans behind that are gonna blow right under here. There is an induction sensor right here and that's for the auto leveling. Not much to see under there, but we can see the nozzle there, the tip, and our heat block above that, which does have a silicone sock. And also it does look like we have a light underneath now, which is great because the light from the top casts a shadow over this, which you know you can't see much but if there's a light under here that's going to be great and going down from there we have our build platform which is a flexible material it's quite thin it is one-sided but it is a pei sheet which is very nice these are great and they last long and just very nice to use and underneath we got the magnetic mat that this magnetizes to. Very cool. Now, the only thing is that I wish they had some kind of brackets in the back to line this up because if you don't get it just right, it doesn't land perfect. But no big deal, just a little detail there. 
So as we go down, we can see our aluminum heated bed there. It is not insulated, which shouldn't be a problem as it's not that large. We can see the frame, quite thick, nice adjustable knobs on four corners. The rollers under there, the belt tensioner here, pretty good wide Y-axis rail, metal frame, manufacturing label and you guys can see we have a 225 by 225 by 265 print volume on this printer which is a great medium size so going down from there nothing to see here quite clean i would have loved to see some kind of storage but i guess it wasn't able to fit we have the micro sd card slot a usb type c port a usb port and then our screen that plugs in got four large rubber feet the screen is quite large we have a sticker here that says to check our voltages let's go ahead and peel the protector it is quite nice but i wish the bezels were a little smaller and it was easier to hold in the hand but other than that these are pretty good screens and it does magnetize here and it's quite convenient to pick it up and use it so i am happy that elegu offers it even in this budget printer so going this way we do have another plug and i believe this is for the ethernet as this does run on clipper now on the left side there's not too much here except our cable that runs up and we do have the power input port it is fused with an on and off switch so looking at it from the back here, let's see our two lead screws, metal brackets, the fan, the back of our hot end here. Love the strain relief for the wire. Not too much to see under here. The blower itself looks quite unique. We do have an on and off switch here, and this is where the power comes in. Love to see the dual Z axes that are synchronized. Two motors, couplers. Here we have the Y motor with the Y belt and the Y end stop switch. So looking at the back from this side, we have a hole here with a few wires coming out. One's for the bed, which is, by the way, strain relieved. And the other one here goes to the Y-axis motor and switch. Now below that, there is another port, which is a 24 volt output, two and a half amps max. So that's quite interesting. It looks like maybe for some kind of accessory. So going this way, we have our power supply switch, which we can adjust from 230 and 115. So depending on where you live, make sure you check this before you do anything else, which is quite important to have the correct voltage set. So since I'm in North America or United States, I will click to 115 and that'll be the voltage I need. So if you're not sure what you need, it's better to turn the printer on on 230 as you won't really damage nothing. The printer might act funny and not work right or might not work at all. But if you are on 230 and you have it on 115, you're probably going to blow a fuse and whatnot else. So yeah, just make sure you change that to the correct voltage depending on where you live. And yeah, that's pretty much it guys here. Definitely love these huge rubber feet. So yeah, pretty neat looking machine. So for the next part, let's plug it in, power it up, check, make sure everything works and level the bed. All right, I got the power cord plugged in. Let's go ahead and power it on and the screen lights up and we definitely have a little bit of a different loading logo than before and it does take a bit longer all right there it is so the good part is is that it all looks similar we got neptune 4 up there print prepare settings level and then our printer information there so yeah we'll go through this in a second let's go ahead and click on prepare and i'll click on all for home and it should work here for x y and now z all right so it looks like everything is good there let's go ahead and click on temp and we'll preheat the nozzle in the bed and we do have hot buttons here very cool pla abs btg and tpu so let's click on pla and so that's going to go to 205 and 60. all right and everything seems to be working and registering which is a good sign let's go back and we need to do leveling so we'll do that next continue and it's going to do its thing And we do have a different menu here that pops up and we can see that it was preset minus 2.2 which looks pretty close but I think it's touching the build plate. So what we need to do first is do the auxiliary adjustment and then the automatic. So the auxiliary one we're going to manually adjust it with these knobs. After we do that we're going to do the automatic and it's going to probe the bed and offset it which is 6 by 6 which is 36 points on the bed. So I'm going to click on auxiliary gonna kind of tell us how to do that which is you got to use a piece of paper confirm we have one two three four and then home so we're gonna start with one after it's done moving there I'm gonna click on one all right so let's click one so I'm just gonna use a post you know but you can use like a normal sheet of paper and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna adjust the bed here to the nozzle using the knobs we got a little drag here we'll go to two which is in the back there all right that's pretty good we'll go to three this one's practically perfect, so now we'll go to four. And this one's loose, so we'll tighten it up a bit. Okay, now I'm going to go back around to one. 
and basically just keep going around until it's pretty close which actually is already pretty good so because this is not a large bed it, you know a few tries around should be good enough yeah that feels perfect too I guess we're good. A little tight on this one. So the closer you get the manual leveling, the less it will have to compensate automatically. So that feels really good. I'm going to click on the middle, which is home. And we'll check that. And sure enough, it's pretty much perfect. So yeah, we are done here. So we're going to go back. So if we want to continue to out of bed leveling, we'll confirm or cancel to just go back. So since we do need to do out of bed leveling, we'll click confirm. And that will start the process for out of bed leveling. And as it takes the measurements, you guys can see they light up. And there's a total of 36. All right, and so now it's finished and we can set our Z-axis offset, which is right here. We can go up or down and the increments of 0 0.01 or 0.1 or one millimeter. So let's go ahead and adjust that. And it does appear we need to go down just a little bit. So I am on 0.01. I'm gonna keep pushing it down until we start feeling some drag. So I feel it. Now I'm gonna go up a little bit to make sure I have a nice little gap there. So my offset ended up being negative 2.310. And on the bottom, all those numbers you guys see, those are all offsets. And we can see that they're not far off from each other, which is a great sign as we have a very leveled bed. And this is why if you adjust it manually, you should have very small offsets. So once we're done here, we're just going to click back and that's just going to save everything. Well, actually, it's going to ask us to save to apply the offset. So we're going to confirm. So it's actually doing a reboot and saving the data. And there we go, we're back to the main menu. So speaking of the menu, let's go ahead and look through it a little more thorough. So we got the Neptune 4 there, the name. We got the print button, this is gonna read the files. And we'll do that in a second. Prepare, we got move. So these are the sections that you could be in. So on the move, you guys can see, you can move the axes individually, the amount or home it here. You can stop the motors or release them. Here we have temp. This is where we're gonna preheat it. I love the presets on the bottom here. Very cool. Let's go ahead and preheat PLA again. And then we got extruder and this is where we're gonna load the filament in and out. But because this is a direct drive, it should be just as easy as putting it through, pushing the lever over, you know, purging it yourself, but you can do it from the screen also. So yeah. In the settings, we got a few things we can adjust, like languages, and these are all the different ones we have. We got temperature settings. This is where you're gonna set the presets. So let's say PLA. You can set this to whatever you want and then it'll preheat to that. We got light control, which by the way, this printer does have a light. So we do have headlight and observation light. So the headlight is going to be the top one, which turned on. And then the observation light is gonna be the little light underneath here. You guys can see it glowing there, pretty cool. So here we can turn our fans on and off. We got motor off here also, which disables the stepper motors. We got filament detector, which is on at the moment. We'll leave that on. Factory settings, so you can restore everything. Let's cancel. We got about the machine. We can see here the name, the build volume, the version it's running on, UI, manufacturing, Elegu, and how to contact them. And below that we have advanced settings, which lets us control the brightness of the screen. And actually I wanted to do this, turn it down for the video a bit so it looks a little better. And also you can turn the peeping sound on and off. So I guess I'll leave it on. That's pretty much it guys for all the settings. And we have that level button that we push to do the leveling. And down here we have our axes positions and then our nozzle and bed temperatures right on the front. So let's go ahead, plug our USB thumb drive here in the front. And we'll see if we have anything in there. So we'll click on print and sure enough, it does read it. And we have a few folders here. Okay, we do have a Buddha G code. We also have a model folder. Let's see what's in here. Okay, so it's like models that comes. Okay, so they also have G codes inside there. So yeah, if you want to print something in the model folder, they have quite a few things we can start with. We are already preheated. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this spool of red filament. You want to cut your filament on the angle. And if we go here to the top, we can see the spool holder. The spool will just sit in like that. We're going to go through the filament detector and there's a light that lights up indicating it senses. And then we're going to go down to the extruder, but we do need to raise it up. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll click on Z up 10 millimeters. Now we can see a little better underneath. And what we're going to do is we're going to just push on this lever to release it and then 
feed our filament there through the top and I can just push this down all the way myself and you guys should see it coming out the bottom and it looks like we had a little bit of blue in there from factory testing but we can go ahead and go to extruder click on load and that will purge it for us if you need to purge more so yeah I mean it's easy enough because it's direct drive just to do it yourself quickly but you can use also the extruder option here all right so we're nice and purged let's move this out of the way and we're gonna click on print and go to our Buddha G code click on that so it actually pulls up the preview very cool so it's gonna take 31 minutes to print confirm and it starts all right so far everything looks good it's purging there on the side and it's printing and our offset looks pretty much perfect guys Let's see if I can get you closer here I'm not sure how much you can see with that <laughs> light shining right down at it it looks really good to my eye here and yeah it's bringing along quite quick right off the bat but if we go back to the screen we can see we have quite a few things here to look at we got the preview here the name of the file so we have settings pause stop and then all this information on the bottom here so we can see we got three percent 30 minutes left the coordinates the amount of time passed nozzle temperature bed temperature speed fan millimeters a second 95 which is pretty quick so if we click on settings we have more options here to choose from change our nozzle temperatures load and unload filament you can control our speed the flow rate and the fan and under adjust here we can go up and down on the z-axis offset right on the fly which is quite helpful if you know you need to go up or down a little bit but ours looks perfect from the initial adjustment and we're good to go we can also turn on filament detection or off here and our led controls are here also so yeah very nice and thorough screen while we're printing so yeah everything looks good so far um i'm gonna go ahead and turn on this fan in the back you guys can't really see but the button's right behind the hot end here so i'm gonna click on okay and they all do turn on and oh yeah there is a lot of air coming from there this could help a lot with the print quality maybe and we'll see how the first print comes out All right guys, so the Buddha is done and it took only 38 minutes, which is not bad. And you guys can see that the screen dims down when it sits there for a bit. So we can print again or return, which is a great option if you wanna keep printing the same thing. Click on return, goes back to home. So what's cool is these auxiliary fans, even though they're on, they actually turned off when the print was finished, which is super cool. So I wonder if they work together with the parts cooling fans. I guess we'll have to see how that does. But yeah, that's pretty neat and quite useful because you don't want these, you know, continuously running when you have it on. So, but yeah, let's check out this print. So the bed is pretty much cooled off. It's stuck on really good. We do have a brim and let's see how easy all right, so that, that just ripped off. So yeah, these PEI sheets are great from Elegoo. And the experience with other printers that I have with these, they all work amazingly well. Very convenient, sticks very well when it's hot. And then as you guys saw, it just peels right off. And the brim here came off really easy. And for a 38 minute print, it looks really, really good. So we had the fans blasting on the back. And if we look, everything looks super clean and smooth. So yeah, excellent print quality right off the bat here. I'm not sure about the parameters since we didn't slice this, but it all looks great. And that's what our bottom looks like. Has like a little crinkle finish. Very happy with the first print here. Very smooth layers. And we do have a few more prints we can print from here. Maybe we'll do that. And also we should probably go to the slicer and see if we can slice our own model and print it out. All right, so we're at the computer and I got the thumb drive plugged in. Let's go ahead and open it up. So this is what we see. We got the user manual in PDF form. And this is what we were looking at as we were building the printer. Definitely go through here. And it's quite helpful to understand the printer and how to use it. So here we have the software folder. We'll go to this last. We got model folder. Here we have Buddha and it is in a G code and STL file. So you can see what you're working with here. And they include quite a few here. We got some kind of nutcracker. Very interesting. So if you want to print this, you can. They also do have the G code for it. Flower pot, a little picture of it here, and the STL file tool holder this could be quite useful so it looks like it goes around on the right side on the back of the z axis bracket and this would be quite useful to print out so we can keep all your tools there that's pretty awesome and there's the stl and g code file so also a couple other folders looks like it says 30 minute benchy and a 18 minute benchy 
very cool but I think we can make our own benchies so let's go ahead and install the software and we'll see what we got here so we got a PDF for the slicing software it's like an introduction and how to use it and looks like this is for Windows I'm actually going to be using Mac so it's quite similar but there are some differences in installations but this basically goes over how to use the whole slicer which is basically Cura if you've ever used that you shouldn't have any issues but you guys can see we have two files we have one for the Mac which is a DMG and an EXE which is for Windows so since I'm using a Mac let's go ahead and install the DMG so what we're going to need to do is just grab the logo here and drag it to the applications and it installs as simple as that we can see it it's almost 400 megabytes 380 and it's done so now we'll exit all this out put this to the side and open Elegu Cura size this up to the window so I guess that should be good and down here we can see there's already an update available we're just going to exit that out for now and so what we need to do next is add the printer so we're gonna click here where it says Neptune 3 plus was the last printer I used then we're gonna click add printer and then we're gonna click on add non network printer here below and as you can see we have custom or Elegu since this is tailored to just Elegu we have all of their printers here so as we can see we got all the Neptunes and also Saturn on the very bottom. But yeah, here's the Neptune 4. So we're gonna choose that, click add. And what that's gonna do is going to give us all of the parameters to that printer. So let's go ahead and throw in a calibration cube in here. We'll zoom in a little closer. So if you click on the model, it's gonna highlight it. And here on the left side, we have some controls we can do. So this is the move control. And you can just grab the arrows and drag it. Or you can enter the parameters here. The next one we got is scale. So you can also just grab it and scale it. I'm gonna control Z that to go back. Or you can put in the dimensions or percentages. And we have rotate. And below that, we got more options that you can mess with, which is really nice. But we're gonna stay here pretty basic, guys. So if we go to the right side on the top here, we can see that this is where our profile files are and our parameters so right now we're on the regular Neptune 4 profile so definitely a good place to start and you can kind of adjust as you go from here so if we click over here where it says normal we can see we have fine and ultra fast and also if you click on these little dots here you want to make sure that you are in at least advanced most likely you're going to be in basic which is going to be quite minimal things you can change but you know depending on your skill level and what you want to do usually I stay in advance and sometimes go to expert if I need something more but yeah if we go click advance we can see a lot more options pop up and here you can adjust all of the parameters to your slice so I'm just gonna run through it real quick everything looks good here I like to see the wall count at three which it is the bottom layers are at six but let's change them to five fill gaps is everywhere but I like to turn it to nowhere I'm gonna leave all the temperatures the way they are as it is gonna be quick printing and here you guys can see the print speeds are quite fast for this kind of printer and the reason for that is because we have clipper software now which does great with fast printing so we'll see how our initial prints come out so yeah everything looks good here we got retractions cooling is on the only thing I might change is the regular fan speed at layer 3 instead of 2 give it a couple good layers before it goes to regular another thing I don't think I want is brim which is the plate adhesion as that's gonna layer around the print to try to hold it down so I think with the bed we got I I usually like to skirt three around the print usually unless it's a large one and everything else looks pretty good guys and over here we have spiralized outer contour which we can also try out which is going to print a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around but yeah that's pretty much it you can play around with these settings and kind of fine-tune your print with the temperature speeds retractions things like that so yeah once you're done doing all that you're going to click the slice button and as you guys can see it says 12 minutes to do this cube which is very impressive and very fast for this kind of printer so we can click on preview here to see all right so for some reason the preview doesn't work so probably We'll have to restart the slicer in any case you can preview it from here and kind of go through the layers let's just go ahead and save it to the removable and the reason it's here is because we plugged in the thumb drive so you can also save it straight to your computer by choosing save to files yeah I'm gonna save it straight to the thumb drive and it's gonna save it and we can eject it from here also but we're not gonna do that double click here on the bed on the model and clear it and let's go ahead throw the benchy in and everything else should be where we left it. So we're gonna click slice. And look at that guys, 35 minutes for this bench. I mean, it's not lightning fast, but you know, for this kind of printer, this is very, very quick. And honestly, if it looks good, this would be quite impressive indeed. So let's go ahead and save this benchy to our removable and it saves and we can eject it. But let's go ahead and see if they're in there. Yep, there they are. So we got the benchy and the calibration cube. So yeah, let's go ahead and inject. And now we can remove it and take it to our printer. And by the way, let's check out the preview. There we go. Now the preview works. 
So if we look up close here, we can go through the layers here and how it's going to print. So this is going to take 35 minutes, surprisingly, to print. Hopefully this was somewhat helpful and it should get you started. But if you want to learn more how to use the Cure, there's a lot of great tutorials out there. Alright, so the cube and the benchy are done and yeah, quite impressive. And what's kind of crazy is that, you know, this is a bed slinger, so we do have the normal i3 setup, but we're having really great results with the prints at the speeds that they're printing. So the cube did finish in 13 minutes, or at least what it said on the display, so I definitely believe the 12 minutes. And the benchy finished at 38 minutes, I believe, something like that. So a few minutes over the 35 predicted. Again, with the heat up time, that probably takes a couple minutes there. So very close to their estimated times on the slicer. So again, very impressive. But yeah, let's go ahead and look at the cube. So the axes matter, and this is the X axis, which goes this way. And we can see, hopefully you guys can see. So the X looks really good, considering this only took 12 minutes to print. And then we got the Y here. We got a little bit more vibrations. Not terrible, but there are some there. Slight ghosting. We got the X wall, pretty clean. And the Y wall, also quite clean, a little more vibrations. And slight ghosting on the edge there. But yeah, not bad at all, guys, for this kind of speed. And the bottom looks good, and the top is also great. So yeah, for the speed that we're doing, I would say these are great results. And they really speak here on the benchy. So we are a little bit too close to the bed, so I do need to offset it a little better. We do have a slight elephant foot. But if we look at the print, we can see we got really nice walls on the bottom there. A little bit something here. But keep in mind, this is a 35 minute benchy, so. It is quite quick for this kind of printer. The layers are sitting great. Now if you do see like lines, that's just the way the light hits the print. It's quite smooth overall. And surprisingly, we can even read back there, it says hashtag 3D Brinchy, which is pretty clean. The walls look great. Good cooling, minimal vibrations and ghosting. So overall, very, very impressive. And the top also looks great. Quite incredible here for the Neptune 4 printing with the Clipper software, which really speeds everything up. Now this printer does advertise input shaping, but I haven't really seen any kind of settings in the menus, but I think it's kind of built in already into the software with the build plate and the hot end, it's preset factory. And we can see in the prints, they look quite clean. So Elegoo made it quite simple to just slice and print and you have good results. So I'm gonna go ahead and print everything at these speeds because I feel like even though we can probably get much better quality going slower. I feel like for what it's producing at these speeds is quite good. And we'll print out a few more things and see how that goes. And also I want to try to do ABS and also we'll do TPU and we'll see how spiralized mode goes. So we're printing away and I figured something out about the fans here in the back. Obviously you can turn them on and off. So if I turn it off you guys can see how quiet that is. If we turn it back on it's quite loud. And the reason it's loud is on the display here if you click on the fan here, just click on it, you guys can see there's a little menu here that pops up and it says mute, normal and violet. So if we click on normal, it slows down a bit. So it's quite a bit quieter. And if we click on mute, it slows down even more. 
So there's some pretty good airflow still. It's not as crazy, but I feel like mute is probably enough for most everything. And we have quite a bit of air flowing here off the front and normal. Yeah, quite a bit more and should be a lot more adequate. But yeah, if we click out of it, we can see normal is 80% and mute is at 50%. So that's cool how you can control it here from the display and the external fan because I was wondering if that was even possible as it was quite loud on the normal 100% and I feel like you probably don't need that unless you're going to be you know ultra printing so I'm going to try normal and the mute mode so right now I'm printing on mute and it's actually quite pleasant but before it was definitely too loud So I went ahead and printed out the, the tool holder and this is what it looks like. It's actually a pretty cool and unique little bracket that'll hold all of our stuff in here. And it clips on here on the back on the side where the screen is. So I printed this out of PLA and it turned out really good and should work pretty well for this purpose. So we're just gonna literally slide it on there. So there's like a little channel there that it kind of goes into and just gonna push it and it clicks on there and it holds on really good. And now we can load it up with our tools. So on these holes, we got the two screwdrivers. Phillips in the flat. Maybe I can turn it here a little more so you guys can see better. And then these slots here is for the wrenches. The larger one goes first and then the smaller one. And then we got the Allen wrenches, biggest to small. Very nice. We also have the needle that goes right over here. Kind of hard to see, but it's like a little dot that it slides into. And these two slots are for like a micro SD card, which I'm putting the one that was the gift with the adapter. And by the way, there's nothing on here. It's just empty. That goes there. And the adapter actually goes right here. And then our little yellow spatula, I think, let's see. Yeah, it goes like this, I believe. So yeah, it kind of has to go behind the wrenches and in. So that goes there. And this guy here actually just hangs right here on this little tab like that quite easy to grab these cut your filament hang them back you know grab your wrench even grab this little spatula here and do what you gotta do with it so yeah very nice and clean way to organize all of the tools All right, so these are all the prints that we printed, and I have to say, guys, the Neptune 4 is a very compelling printer. Not only does it deliver great print quality, it has so many features, and also running on Clipper really helps it take it to the next level. So we do have a few things to look at. We've seen the little Buddha here, the Benchy, the Cube. Let's look at this little frog next. Everything was printed in PLA, 250 millimeters a second setting in the slicer, so it was very quick. I don't remember the times of all these, but this was not very long at all. And you guys can see all of our layers are still sitting very nicely and everything is quite smooth. Also very minimal stringing. We got a little bit on the bottom, but yeah, between the eyes here is pretty much perfect. So yeah, very impressive print with the frog. Here we have a planter, then this was actually included with the printer, so we didn't slice this, but yeah, it's basically a little bowl here that you put soil in and you can water and that's what the holes are for. So yeah, if we look at the walls, they look really nice. And this print also printed very quickly and yeah, very solid, quick print. So the bottom line is, is the printer gets the job done much quicker. So here we have a pretty crazy contraption and yeah, I've never printed this before, but I wanted to see what it was. And yeah, I don't think I'm gonna print it again, at least at this size, it's too big, number one. And it looks like the tolerances are quite wobbly, so we can probably scale it down. But this is pretty cool to see if the printer is accurate. And as you can see with this thing, we had no issues. So it just popped right off and started working. I'm pretty sure scaling this down would still work so maybe that would be a good print for the future But yeah, you guys can see all the details here. It's in white a little hard to see but very nice print And again, this was printed at very quick speeds 
and didn't take long at all to print so pretty cool print but probably needed to be a little bit smaller but with that said we do have this gear here and it is called bearing so all the parts here are printed separately and we should be able just to spin it up and see the bottom there so pretty much perfect adhesion to the plate and by the way all the prints are 0.2 layer height and pla here so far so let's see if we can break it loose here i can feel that they're loose enough because like there's some play which is good and there we go so yeah it broke loose just by hand which is a great indication of extremely good tolerances and that's exactly what we got we got just a little bit of movement in there well actually a perfect amount of movement and this is how it's supposed to be actually a little looser than tighter as it can spin so easily and freely uh yeah most printers don't get it this good this one is perfect so yeah as far as tolerances go excellent print and you can print functional prints like this with ease on this printer here we have a fun one which is a millipede and it's a bunch of separate pieces that combine and it turned out pretty good there's a little bit of blobbing and some stringing pretty minor but considering the speed it was printing at it's very respectable you guys can see it looks really good so there is supposed to be like a little texture on it that's why it looks the way it does but yeah the impressive part is all of the feet stuck to the build plate and then just popped off so yeah again this pi sheet is great so i did print an abs and that's these wheels here and i did slow it down a little bit for abs as you know we have to be much hotter and it was 270 on the nozzle and 100 on the build plate held on great and this is what was on the plate here you can see the finish so these are our little rc wheels for our c car we do have a support here let's see how easy that comes off look at that perfect yeah even with abs here at least for these wheels it did a really good job and the speed was 180 instead of the 250 and you guys can see it flowed well and everything is quite even and it looks great for abs prints so yeah for smaller ones like these wheels here there's no issue sticking and printing pretty quickly so for the last ones here let's look at this large one so this is like a statue or a bust of deadpool it's in this blue kind of matty filament 0.2 layer height, the normal 250 millimeters a second speed that was in the slicer. Overall looks great. So we do have a little bit of ringing here and there, which is, you know, expected somewhat. The bottom is super clean. I mean, literally perfection. And if we look a little closer here at the details, you guys can see it all looks great. Now we did have a little bit of droopage here on the overhangs under the arms. And that's probably because I turned the auxiliary fan down and maybe that wasn't enough for the amount of heat that we're putting in the nozzle, 220. So, But yeah, other than this line here that you guys maybe can see that goes through the print, not sure what happened there, but seems like a glitch in the G-code or something. Yeah, it's pretty much perfect. Even up here on his face, it looks pretty good. So yeah, 0.2 layer height for this print. And it's quite large, almost filling up to the very top. So for the last two prints here, we got spaceships and one of them is in TPU and actually I got two pieces here. Now normally what I do is I print TPU in spiralized mode to show you the double function that TPU is so great for. Here you guys can see on the very bottom, like the layers are sitting beautifully. You can kind of see how smooth they are there. But as we went up, it started kind of doing funny things there. So it almost seems like it was kind of confused in spiralized mode because usually you need to turn off recovery mode, but this printer doesn't doesn't have any function for that the only thing we have is to turn off the filament detector and this is why I decided to print another print and we still had the same results so that didn't really help us so yeah if you're gonna do spiralized prints that apparently are small like this it won't work and the reason I say that is because we have a spiralized print back there which turned out fine for whatever reason but yeah as far as TPU goes it prints great you guys can see here on the bottom it's very solid and you know we can bend this thing up pretty well and it'll just bounce right back. So TPU is great for specific needs that require a lot of bending and whatnot else and just durability. So I would say TPU prints well, but for spiralized, it's questionable. And the reason for that is we have this print here, which by the way is the full height of 265. And this print is called a rocket plane. And this is in spiralized mode, which is we got a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around. So it's hollow to the very top. And what's crazy that for the most part, this printed perfect. And let's start here from the bottom. So. Yeah, it stuck well to the build plate as usual. And you guys can see how smooth those layers are. So that 
is incredible for sure and this is PLA now if you guys see this line right here that's actually my fault the spool was tangled so instead of pausing it and restarting it which will leave a blob I ended up cutting the filament and then fixing it and putting it back in which when I was putting it back in I put some pressure on it that's what that line is but yeah if we ignore that you guys can see it puts the layers down beautifully all the way to the top which is incredible so yeah very stable and beautiful layering and even around these corners here it looks beautiful so and it's not always perfect there so now if we look closer here to the very top we can see when it got smaller it started to under extrude again kind of like on the TPU spaceship so yeah it does still have the issue so my guess is spiralized prints that are smaller in diameter for some reason it does have an issue but larger ones it seems to do okay but that would be something that Elegoo can maybe incorporate in a software update being able to turn off power resume recovery mode internally here in the printer so overall i'm very impressed of what elegu put together here because they seem to push the boundaries on the value of what you pay compared to what you get so yeah the neptune 3 was a great printer the pro especially and now the 4 here is even better than that and it does everything so well for a very reasonable price so for that i give it a huge thumbs up and definitely would recommend it especially if you're getting started so if you if you do want to pick one up for yourself, I'll have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos, check out my 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. And also stay tuned for more videos. There's quite interesting stuff coming up. And if you made it to the end, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.